this, 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 this is Mumbai. It's the most populous city of India with an estimated population of 23 million in its metropolitan area. This city has it all. The city has penthouses and slums, rich and poor, history and modernity. Everyone here is a hustler even when they don't have anything to sell. So let's get exploring. Join me now on my way to destination number one of my Mumbai tour, down at the old Mumbai port, the Gateway of India. It's kind of called the Gateway of India because it's the entry point to Mumbai's port, which during the time of the British rule was the main port for the East India Trading Company. So this was literally the gateway into all of India. It still uses a sort of ceremonial gateway when foreign officials and celebrities come to India. In proper, if it ain't broke, don't fix it fashion, everyone that comes in now goes through this, even though it was officially fabricated for King George V. We're then on a short walk to destination number two. Right next to the gateway is the famous Taj Mahal Hotel. So this big building behind me is the Taj Mahal Palace in Mumbai. It's the most expensive hotel to stay at. In 2008, it was actually uh, the location of the 2008 terrorism attacks. It was actually made into a really good movie with Dev Patel called Hotel Mumbai. The terrorism issues that they still have here in India is, is prevalent everywhere. You major structure you enter, everywhere you go, security is super tight. Uh, most larger buildings that you enter, they seem to have metal detectors and security guards and things to try and prevent any future attacks. Quite an important side note at this point, if you're traveling to India as a foreigner, be prepared for a lot of this. As a foreigner, a lot of people will want to get to know you, even take pictures with you. It's a lot less common in touristy areas, but it still does happen. Also, be prepared for people trying to sell you things. This guy followed me the entire time I was at the gateway and wouldn't take no for an answer. Literally followed me. Pretty sure that guy is trying to sell me something. He's persistent. <laughs> I have got to be going before someone else tries to sell me something. On to the next destination now, I guess. That big tower we just drove past is one of the many, many homes in Mumbai that belong to Mukesh Ambani, who is the 11th richest man in the world. Now, obviously filming something like that from the outside is as close as I'm gonna get to uh, the wealthier and richer side of Mumbai. This big structure behind me is called the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus. Um, it seems like quite a lot of things are called Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj. Chhatrapati was a, a warrior as far as I can make out. Quite a lot of buildings around here are named this way. As I learned my cost, as I mistakenly typed Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj into Google Map and assumed that the top answer was the one I was looking for, ended up going to a museum. I mean, it seems like too specifically long a name to be mistaken with something else. But that's the name of the train station, the airport, the art gallery, a museum, a hostel, a sports complex, a market, a shrine, a school, a lake, a garden, a bus station, a park, a playground, several restaurants and cafes, and about a hundred statues across all of India. To a Westerner, it might be a simple enough mistake. In Toronto, Pearson's an airport. In London, King's Cross is a train station. In New York, JFK is an airport, and Grand Central is a train station. Usually after the first 10 syllables or so, there's no mistaking which location you're talking about. But uh, this is the terminus building at the end of Mumbai, and as you can probably see, it's a little bit, it's probably one of the most busiest locations in all of Mumbai, because this is like not just tourist location, it's also for all the commuters and stuff coming out. Apparently you can get a train ticket from here to the other side of Mumbai for like 10 rupees. If nothing else, it's just fascinating to look at. The scale and people never ceases to amaze me. The place is absolutely beautiful. Anyway, that is the Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Terminus. What's this place called? Naam kya hai? Chhatrapati Shivaji. This is this is Sanjay, by the way. He's my driver for the day. Aap kaise ho, dost? I am fine. So this. This is Marine Drive, which stretches like a very large section of the bay. Along Marine Drive, of course, is where like the fancy hotels and stuff are all situated too. Certain places are very expensive, certain places are very cheap. Marine Drive, I would definitely say is in the, um, the higher end of the spectrum. This is a good spot at night as well, apparently, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll check later. Okay, here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Sunset Boulevard. No, wait a minute. What's it called? Marine Drive, close enough. Yeah, uh, that is pretty nice. So uh, Marine Drive is also called the Queen's Necklace because at night 
Uh, all along the length of the whole bay, there are these really, really bright lights that look like pearls. And then in the center point where the, the neck would be is a, a big light display up there as well. I mean, someone questioned that it might be a little bit rude to give the queen a pearl necklace, but... Anywho. Right at the top of the bay, there's a it's big beach. I've been told the water's not very good for swimming in, so it looks like a lot of people just come here to uh, play a bit of football or a bit of cricket. So we've come over this side of the bay for another tourist attraction in the area called the Hanging Gardens. So these are the Hanging Gardens, although on first impression, I don't really see much that's like, you know, hanging. It's Ambani, uh, Ambani building. Ambani's building? Yeah. Oh, another one. Low, that's that. That's Slow. that building from earlier, the one on the horizon there, right about there. Right about here, this building right here. That's that building, um, what's the name? Mukesh Hambani, yes. the world's 11th richest person. Hanging garden, good, they done fine. Fine? Fine. How you like that? Uh, good, good. Probably one of the more peaceful places we've been so far, especially when you're in the shade. That sunlight is relentless, the heat. What is it now? 28 degrees. You know, that bit there, although it's a little bit weedy and, and, and underwater, it definitely reminds me a little bit of the rose gardens in Dunedin. I have a special reason to remember that too. Next three locations on our list are gonna be three significant locations of religion. All within a relatively close proximity to one another are the Haji Ali Dargah Mosque, the Sri Siddhi Vinayak Temple, and the Basilica of Our Lady on the Mount. All three locations seem to be unfortunately heavily commercialized. Most other places of worship I've seen don't usually have such a presence of stalls, or souvenirs, or pressure sellers, or beggars, or entry fees. Uh, but he's not allowed. Not allowed. Yeah. Yeah. Not allowed. I know, I know. Great sales tactic that they use is just come up, shake your hand, get on a first name basis, ask where you're from, that sort of stuff. Very, very buddy-buddy, very, very chummy-like. And then once they've got you reeled in, they're still holding on to you, and then they force things into your hand. It doesn't matter where you go if you're a tourist, <laughs> there's gullible written on your forehead. Collection, once again, of absolute hustlers. Everyone here is trying to sell. The reason is best not known to me. I have to cover my head for this. Although, having said that, there's a lot of people who aren't. <laughs> I think I might have got rumbled on that as well. It's one of the places that you have to see when you come to Mumbai, according to many online websites and searches. I'm just going to directly read it because there's no way I'm going to memorize it. Haji Ali Dargah, this monument, or um, it's also called a mausoleum, I've seen it written, is a mosque and is the uh, monument of pre Haj Ali Shah Bukhari. I'm trying my absolute darndest not to buy anything else by accident. Just a short distance up the road from here is our next destination. This one in particular, I'm going to have difficulty learning the name of. This one's the Temple of Ganesh. It was the, um, the elephant-headed god. Funny story why he has an elephant's head. Apparently, he was um, guarding his mother, Parvati, while she was having a bath. Shiva came along. In anger, he knocked Ganesh's head clean off. Eventually, they decided that the next head that they find, would just that would do, because they couldn't find his head after it had been launched that far. The next animal that they incidentally came across was an elephant. So, hence, Ganesh has the head of an elephant. I'm gonna go in now, um, have a quick look, and then come back. But, unfortunately, no cameras are allowed inside here. It's another place for selling things for blessings and stuff. Another list of hustlers making money on religion. I'll be right back. The Sri Siddhin... Siddhin Naya... Siddhin... Siddhin Nayak Temple. The Sri Siddhin Nayak Temple. Like I say, unfortunately, no cameras were allowed inside, so so if, if you do come to India, uh, looking at the insides of them is absolutely spectacular. Anywho, I need to make my way back to the car and we're on to the, the third location. This is the Basilica of St. Mary on the Mount, or also known as the Mount Church of St. Mary. As you can see, this actually had quite a lot of heavy damage and stuff to it. Apparently it was rebuilt in, um, so up there, 1904 it was rebuilt in. 
I couldn't find very much online about why I had to be rebuilt or what had happened to it, but um, it looks like it's had significant damage. Uh, across the road from there is another shrine of St. Mary. Once again, hundreds of stalls everywhere selling religious artifacts and iconography. All three locations were absolutely breathtaking inside. It's just a pity that I couldn't film any of it. However, I did learn a couple of tricks to dissuade getting pulled into a sales pitch or begging. First, being on your phone seems to help. Or even narrating into a camera. So just up the road from that, the next destination on our list is infamous in Mumbai. This is Dharavi, which is the third largest slum in the world. It's actually quite, I would say, a technological hub. A lot of industries and businesses are built here. It is obviously one of the most densely packed and very populous areas in all of Mumbai. I just saw someone getting arrested and that. That looks a little bit like frontier justice going on. I wouldn't mind coming here for like a proper tour or something with a tour guide, but like they say, being down here solo is probably one of the more dangerous things that you can do while traveling around Mumbai. The actual definition of a slum is a population of a very, very high density and a very, very low socioeconomic status. When you think of Mumbai, you're probably not thinking about something along the lines of this. This is Infinity Mall, one of the few malls that I've ever seen ever that has a roller coaster. <laughs> you could be literally anywhere in the world right now. This could be California, this could be this could be Canada. This could be anywhere. I mean, yeah, it's got a huge food court as well, and you can enjoy the sound of blood curdling screams while you eat. Hundreds of like, you know, designer brands and different stores. Quite a common theme with a lot of these places as well is that I'm not actually allowed to film in here. Correction, I'm allowed to film in here as long as I film on my phone. And it's not just Infinity Mall. Sure, that's the biggest one that I've seen, but there are plenty of others. The closest one to where we're staying is the Oberoi Mall, which has a lower tolerance on cameras. I've been told by multiple security guards, sir, no camera, no camera. It's kind of difficult to be a vlogger if you're not allowed to use a camera. <laughs> Covert microphone and cell phone still seems to work fine. Anyway, on to the next destination. So we find ourselves now in Lokandwala, which is one of the um, shopping areas of Mumbai. It's sort of like one of the places that you would expect to find a pair of Gucci sunglasses for, you know, like 40 rupees or something like that. Okay, 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 okay. Unfortunately, this is a good way of getting run over. There we go. One of the more popular spots in Lokandwala is High Point. It's like an off-street street food. Um, one of the specialities that I really wanted to try, Sejuan Dosa. Starting a bit of a theme here with all these fusion foods. The other thing that I recommend from here is the Kulfi Faluda. It's not quite ice cream, but saying ice cream with noodles sounds wrong. That is nice though. Right after having all that spicy dosa, having this to cool your mouth down a little bit, is a good idea. Incidentally, having street food is brilliant. There's so much great and affordable foods to try, and avoiding getting deli belly can be risky, but picking your vendors with a bit of care and common sense is another great way to embrace travel and culture. Wait, that's actually good. 70 rupees, that's like just over a dollar. Are you made it in like... hard to argue with. You made it in seconds. Yeah. Ten. to the final location that I have on our list of things to see in Mumbai, which is Juhu Beach. Well, it is a tad bit busier than I was expecting to be, but that is why it is one of the tourist spots for locals as well as tourists. Juhu in general is actually one of the locations where a lot of film stars and stuff own a lot of properties and things down here too. I think um, 
on the top Bachin lives around here somewhere. I was here the other day during the day and it was never as bad as this. This is a Thursday afternoon and it's a little bit packed. I had planned on coming here to film the sunset, but unfortunately it's kind of it's kind of behind the smog, unfortunately. Also hoping for a nice quiet afternoon by the beach. But quiet and Mumbai certainly don't go together. Barely hear yourself think, but that's the charm of Mumbai as well. That's the charm of India, I suppose. Juhu Beach is also one of the locations of quite a lot of the more sophisticated, fancy resort sort of hotels. Up next to the Ramada Plaza, there's also a lot of different like little street food vendors and things too. One of the other things that they get down at Juhu Beach, they offer like hire of jet skis and boats and I'm fairly sure I've seen parasailing here as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.